Today we have an event about wind power, what it actually costs both the society, environment, economy, whatever. We have a lot of various speakers from different countries, experts in different topics, and it's going to be a very interesting event. Well, it's quite clear that uh, the wind industry has many disadvantages that have not yet been recognized, uh, neither politically nor economically. And what was discussed today is that uh, the, the wind industry and the, and the rapid expansion of the wind industry is to the detriment of the environment, the economy and also human health. So it does have many disadvantages uh, and, and they should be recognized politically as well as uh, in the broader economy because currently with the European policies this big push towards more and more wind um, will, will start to hurt us all. So we need to um, to, to embark on a different policy before it's too late. I think the biggest problem we have today is that decision is made here. It should be made and stated on a local level by the people that are affected by it. When it comes to wind power, it affects the house prices. It's only, you only need to have a discussion that you have a threat of wind power in your neighborhood or your residents, and uh, they, that will lower the prices of 30% right away. And what that means is that people can't, can't get loans to build houses on the countryside in Sweden, because that's where the wind power industry is so strong. And um, that means that the, you're gonna have a rural area in Sweden where people can't live. Suppose that you are in charge of a hospital you have patients that have difficulties breathing. You have two different technologies to choose from. One in which sometimes you don't get any air at all. Sometimes you get far more oxygen than the patient can handle. You cannot control it. It changes, it fluctuates violently. Or you can go for a system that works 24-7, gives the right amount of, of oxygen to the patient every second in the, in the day and you control how much should be given. Uh, thank you to the member of the European Parliament, uh, Mr. Nissenen, Johan Nissenen, for inviting my commentary. Thank you for your work in raising serious questions about the expansion of wind energy in Europe. And uh, I encourage you, I think, keep in mind the economics of wind energy are terrible and that uh, we need to make the environmental case against wind, not just the economic case. I think if you combine those two things and combine it as well with a positive message for abundant natural gas and nuclear, which are uh, both reduced carbon emissions and are the basis of civilization and, the, and a way to avoid environmental impacts on the landscapes, för allt är det det här med decentraliseringen, det vill säga de här besluten som man ska ta måste man författa mer lokalt gällande vindkraft. Idag är det, finns det alltid som risk att, slut, att i slutändan så kommer det alltid landa på den offentliga sektorn och stå för nedskärningarna, alltså nedkostnaden för omontering av vindkraften. Jag vill motverka det genom att säga att de ska betala in till en fond redan inför etableringen av ny vindkraft. I'm now very grateful to Mr. Johan Nissenen and Mr. Robert Rose for having the courage to organize this seminar. And I say courage because this is a part of the Green Deal and clearly an organized pattern of the big wind. With this collusion, with an establishment supported with tax money, feeding connivence and corruption, not only within the European Union, but also around the world, wherever they are operating. And this is a true crime to the environment. It is a true crime to the people. And it is a true crime to the next generations. We have this great event about the cost of wind energy here in Brussels. And we can conclude that um, we need a real debate about wind energy. What we have seen today and we have heard today is that not everyone is, ever, is, is very enthusiastic about uh, wind industry and renewables in particular, we, um, we need energy, we need electricity to take people out of poverty and what we see with wind industry is that it's, uh, it's very costly, real costly uh, for nature but also on an economic basis. 
What we have to do now is uh, go back to bases, um, spread this message to the people and of course we want to preserve nature, that's a very important thing, but if we want to preserve nature then we must do something else than wind turbines because wind turbines is costing so much land space, it's destroying nature, it's a huge amount of resources, huge amount of waste and the costs are very high.